I talk about this, the school year right around the corner, and uh, your children will need to prepare, of course, but what about their mental health for the upcoming year? So much is different about this school year. I want to bring in licensed mental health counselor Sharice Johnson. She's live this morning to talk about this important issue. Good morning, Sharice. Good morning, Brigida. Uh, thank you so much for waking up early to be here with us. Absolutely. So let's talk about this because I feel like there's so much angst and stress surrounding mm -hmm. this school year than in years past just because of the time we're living in. Absolutely. This school year is unlike anything before and no one has a playbook for this time. So uncertainty and fear is the undercurrent for everyone and especially for our students. So as parents, as professors, as teachers, it's gonna be so important for us to show them understanding and help them manage their expectations, not only of us, but of themselves as well. And I think that that may be something that typically, you know, young folks don't have to, to worry about, right? That's one, one of the mm -hmm. benefits of childhood, um, and that's going to be different this year. But you also say, in addition to managing that level of expectation, it's going to be important more than ever to, to make sure there's a routine. Yes. So a big part of how we anchor ourselves and find our sense of calm is through routine. And then you think about one of the key things that students are losing by not being in school is their sense of autonomy and independence. So if we can keep routines and rituals that continue to help them feel like they have choice and they're gaining their independence versus losing it, it is absolutely going to help them feel better emotionally. And of course, with the virtual learning being the option for so many uh, school districts in our area, Sharice, kids are already going to be spending more time in front of the screen. So when mm -hmm. the learning is done, really important to have them, you know, sort of check out from that aspect. Yes, students, you're not going to want to hear this, but you absolutely <laughs> need to get off the screen. And here's why. It's multiple levels. So one of the biggest is eye strain. Our children are not used to being on the computer for this amount of time. And so that's extremely harmful. It's going to add extra fatigue. And then the other capacity of that is just the loss of hours that they're going to spend kind of zoned in and not being able to focus, mm -hmm. which will then hurt them when they have to. So some kind of routine in place that says, even if it's just for a while, once school is ended, take a break, get outside, do something active, mm -hmm. but really step away from the screen. Yeah, that's going to be so important. Uh, and, you know, one of my girlfriends right now, what she's sort of agonizing over is how to have like safe interactions with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a friend of my godson's because she talks about how he misses that. So you are saying consider forming what's called social pods with neighbors or families. Absolutely. That's a great way in a safe and appropriate manner for you to make sure that your kids continue to get some interaction as well as it gives them something to look for. So one of the most difficult parts now about being inside is all we're doing is looking at the same walls and our kids need to be excited about something. So get a few families that maybe have kids in similar ages that are either in your neighborhood or your school get together on a consistent basis and do different activities with them so that they can enjoy it and feel like they're still getting that part of the social interaction that they miss so much. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Because I feel like, you know, just like with adults, we need to dial it up in terms of yeah. our mental health. It's going to be important for our, our kids too. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple of things. One, as parents, we have to make sure that we're giving them the space to feel the way they feel. A lot of times we think we're being helpful by cutting off what they're saying and telling them, oh, it's going to be okay and just being on the bright side. So let them be upset and then hold hope side by side is, is one thing. Second, we need to kind of mirror what they're experiencing, but manage an appropriate way. How do you navigate through a really difficult time when they're disappointed? How do you continue to find purpose is essential, but really staying checked in with them? And then for those high school and college students, please don't let them fly under the radar. They're at an age where they would typically be in their room for a significant period of time. But some recent research as early as yesterday is showing that their level of suicidal ideation and thoughts and depression and anxiety are skyrocketing. Wow. So much to consider for this upcoming school year. Uh, this mm -hmm. is an important conversation. Thank you for, for leading the charge with us uh, on this, Sharice. Licensed mental health counselor. Appreciate your expertise this morning.